good. Great. Well, I would like to welcome everyone here today and uh, thank you for joining me. And I'm excited to tell you about Great Plains College and some of the amazing opportunities that exist uh, for students here in Saskatchewan. So Saskatchewan, Canada is um, not necessarily one of Canada's best known destinations, but uh, certainly we are working hard to change that and uh, to try to introduce people to some of the amazing things that exist here for people to live and work and study uh, within our province. So the province of Saskatchewan is located in kind of like West Central Canada, I guess. Uh, it's well known for agriculture and oil. Those are our two main industries. Uh, it is a prairie province, so it has some just amazing scenery and uh, um, beautiful sunsets and, and really nice uh, scenic spots to visit. So there we are in the middle of the country. Uh, so as I said, uh, these three provinces, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba would be known as our prairie provinces. And uh, we have a, what we think is a perfect location in Canada as we are central to uh, many of our uh, Canadian destinations. So we can easily fly to Vancouver, easily fly to Montreal, Toronto, uh, the maritime provinces. Uh, we, we feel like we're, we're in the center of all the action here in Canada. So Saskatchewan, as I said, offers some really incredible opportunities for uh, the immigrant population uh, and international students included in that. So the province of Saskatchewan uh, has a, a low cost of living in comparison to other parts of the country. So for example, in comparison to Vancouver, uh, the cost of living is about 50% less. So it is a significant difference in cost of living from other parts of, of Canada. The government of Saskatchewan has used immigration widely to try to attract people into skilled labor um, positions as well as into our, our education institutions. So we do have a very culturally diverse population and it also makes the people of Saskatchewan very welcoming. We have been um, like, living with immigration for all of our lives and therefore we're we're very accustomed to people of uh, for, of all cultures and are very welcoming even in the even in the country of Canada the people of Saskatchewan are known to be very welcoming and warm friendly people so I guess uh, we have to talk about the weather because um, certainly it's a hot topic and when I say hot I don't mean it in that sense uh, the province of Saskatchewan does uh, boast really variable weather. So we do have four seasons and uh, currently we are in our fall season and uh, that's the middle picture there. Uh, it's the most, in my opinion, beautiful season. Uh, we have uh, the leaves are changing color and it's just such a, a beautiful time of year. Uh, but we are moving towards our winter season, which is the top picture, which and it will snow and the temperatures will drop. Um, now, this is one that's always of interest to people coming from warm climates. And uh, basically, what I always tell students is that when you arrive in September, the weather is still very warm. And so basically, throughout the months of September, October and November, the temperature will slowly get cooler. Uh, so your body has the opportunity to acclimatize very, very slowly. Now, um, this is something that uh, that is important, because I think when people think of uh, Canada, then they immediately think of that top picture. Well, th that isn't like that all the time that we d definitely have weather that is uh, hot and, um, and also rainy and, and all different types of weather. So the other thing I'll say is that the, the winter season does provide students the opportunity to, to get involved with activities that they never would have the opportunity to do in their home countries uh, if they come from a climate like the Philippines, for example. So uh, most students end up just 
loving the winter actually because it does provide these uh, opportunities to do some really cool amazing winter activities and I always tell students that I have never in my career had a student leave because it was too cold. So uh, definitely the weather is something that um, I'm sure is a question, but I know it will become uh, a non-issue very quickly for you. So Saskatchewan has two major cities, uh, Saskatoon and Regina. Uh, the population of the province of Saskatchewan is only about 1.2 million people. So uh, we have a land area about the size of Germany, but we uh, have only 1.2 million people. So that's why immigration is really important to us and particularly the international student population that will be trained in Canadian institutions and then take up um, positions within our workforce. So Great Plains College is a designated learning institution, which means that we have been through a, a process that the federal government has in place to approve our institution to host international students. The Great Plains College organization has six campuses across the uh, province of Saskatchewan. Three of those campuses currently accept international students. The majority of our campus locations are in the central part of Saskatchewan and throughout the southwest corner of the province. So the first campus uh, city that we have is named Kindersley. Uh, so Kindersley has a population in the community of about 5,000 people. Now, sometimes this is um, something that students question. They, they wonder if there's opportunities in a, in a community that, that, that is that size. And uh, what I would like to tell you is that because our population in Saskatchewan is relatively small, it is spread out over a large land area. So populations uh, like, like Kindersley's population are very, very common in the province. And each of these cities maintains lots of different activities and opportunities for its residents. The other thing to note is that we are an agriculture um, society. So our populations are um, within communities, but the outlying population that is attributed to the farming um, population does account for the majority of our people. So Kindersley actually has a population somewhere in the vicinity of 20,000 people, but they don't necessarily all live right in the community. They live in the surrounding area around the city. Again, lots of activities, uh, lots of sports opportunities, lots of recreation and arts and heritage opportunities exist in every one of our cities in Saskatchewan. The city of Swift Current is uh, our largest center that has a uh, Great Plains College campus. Uh, we are the main hub, I guess, for southwestern Saskatchewan. Uh, we are about, I would say, an hour and a half um, to the American border. So we are very south in, um, in the country. We're the sixth largest city in Saskatchewan. Uh, the city of Swift Current is a uh, very safe, very clean, uh, very welcoming city to be a part of uh, with uh, a very strong Filipino uh, community within. Our third campus location is in the city of Warman. Uh, the city of Warman is about 15 minutes from Saskatoon, which is one of our main cities. Uh, it is a very a uh, fast growing city because of its location uh, and proximity to Saskatoon. So again, Great Plains College is a designated learning institution. And what this means for students is that after they complete their program, uh, they are eligible to receive a postgraduate work permit. So uh, that extends your time in the country to be able to, um, I guess, get some work experience and to build a resume and uh, you know potentially uh, pursue permanent residence within our country. 
Great Plains College is very proud of the fact that uh, we maintain small class sizes. So class sizes anywhere in that um, kind of 15 to 24 students. And this is really important in my mind for the international student population. Uh, when you are attending school in a culture that is not your own, um, particularly in a language that might be uh, foreign to you, the small class sizes really do help uh, students to get the support they need in order to be successful. One other thing you'll note about the small institution um, setting, such as Great Plains College offers, is that staff are very connected to the students. They are very in tune to uh, who needs support and they're very willing to provide it. So there is the opportunity for you to, to get a greater level of support within our classrooms, uh, just because of that um, high degree of uh, engagement on the part of our instructing staff. The Swift Current campus uh, prior to the pandemic was also home to a varsity athletics program. So if students are interested, then they certainly can participate in, uh, in that. Hopefully once the pandemic wraps up and we can get started with those types of things again. So the, in the organization, uh, the Great Plains College organization uh, annually has about 4,500 full-time, part-time, and casual students uh, each year. Uh, as I said, we're very proud of the, the quality of education that we offer. Uh, we are also very proud of the fact that uh, we are um, providers of some excellent student supports for all of our students be it in a particular subject area, or if there's language support that's necessary. Each one of the campuses that has international students does um, have a student association. And international students are encouraged to participate in that uh, so that they have it for our international student population. And every campus location does um, support a, an area that is a student's area. So there be it a lounge or a cafeteria or uh, you know, a place for students to kind of hang out and get to know each other, uh, even from other programs. So one of the main partners of our program is the Newcomer Welcome Center uh, in various communities across Saskatchewan. So uh, as I've said, the government of Saskatchewan has used immigration widely to uh, help to grow our population. The federal government has put in place these newcomer welcome center um, facilities to assist uh, people who are settling in Canada to do so in a supported manner. So the newcomer welcome center provides many different services for newcomers to Saskatchewan and they are a huge help to our international student population. Uh, they could potentially help students with um, settlement pieces like finding um, finding accommodation or finding employment. Uh, they can help to prepare students for a job interview. Uh, they'll even go so far as to take you to the grocery store for the first time to, uh, you know, kind of get the lay of the land in, in um, Canadian culture. So very, very uh, helpful and uh, willing to help with whatever it is that you need assistance with. So currently, Great Plains College has four programs that we offer for um, the 2022 year. The Administrative Assistant Program is a nine-month certificate program. It is uh, the, a program that has two intakes per year in January and in September. The Business Diploma is a two-year diploma and uh, it has um, one intake in September. And it actually only has one specialization, which is in the management area. The human resources uh, specialization is not being offered for 2022. It is offered at two of our campus locations, Swift Current and Warman. The continuing care assistance program is an eight month program that is an entry level health position. And it is offered uh, as a September intake at our Kindersley and Swift Current campuses. 
And then our second two-year diploma program is the Youth Care Worker Diploma, which has a September intake and is offered at our Warman campus. So the Administrative Assistant Program, as I said, is a nine-month program. It um, provides people with training in uh, many of the skills required to be an executive assistant, uh, such as word processing, uh, basic accounting, spreadsheets, uh, any communications uh, information. So those types of skills that um, are necessary in many different organizations across many different industries. Graduates are uh, able to find work in, in many different positions, such as data entry clerks or administrative assistants in, in as I said, many industries. The average salary is about $50,000 per year. For September 2022, the cost of this program is $16,000 per year. However, all of the prices that uh, I'll quote include all of your costs associated with your academic program. So for example, uh, all of your student fees, all of your health insurance, tuition and books are all included in one price. So uh, once, you're, once you've paid that, that price, then uh, there are no other uh, costs associated with your academic program, uh, only your cost of living would be on top of that. So this program has a three-week practicum placement, which allows you to gain on-the-job experience, but also allows you to build uh, some references on your resume, uh, which will be important when you start to look for a job after you've graduated. Uh, one thing to note is that when you're applying for your study permit for this program, you do need to apply for a co-op work permit to allow you to do that practicum placement. So all of our admissions requirements are pretty similar. Uh, this, this program actually is the one program that has a few differences. So basically, in all of our programs, we're looking for successful completion of a uh, secondary diploma that would be equivalent to a Saskatchewan grade 12. Uh, students need to have a minimum average of 60% and no courses uh, below 50%. A highest secondary level of English and math is helpful, but it's not mandatory. It's just that this is a very language and math heavy course. So having those prerequisites is helpful to you for your own personal comfort and success within the program. We do have um, language requirements, of course, and so our overall IELTS score is 6.5. And in this particular course, uh, we ask that there are no bands less than six. And this is the only course that has that requirement. We do accept also Duolingo, and we look for a minimum score of 115. Um, probably the question is going to come up about, about whether or not we can accept uh, an English as a medium of instruction certificates from the Philippines. And we do entertain uh, those requests uh, if the student's education has come from an accredited institution, which is um, on a list that is provided to us by our assessment service. Uh, then those waivers may be granted. However, we do also ask students to, to complete the Duolingo, which is very inexpensive and um, easy to access assessment uh, because it seems to improve their, uh, their ability to get a study permit if they have some assessment to show. So the business diploma is our foundation uh, program in the area of business. So it is a two year diploma program and uh, it does transfer directly to either of our universities in Saskatchewan, either the University of Saskatchewan uh, or the University of Regina if students would like to complete their degree after finishing the two years uh, from Great Plains College. So the job opportunities, again, are vast in this area because a business diploma um, has applicability in many different areas and industries across the, uh, across the workforce. The salary is on average about 79,000 per year. The cost of this program is uh, approximately $17,000 per year. Uh, so 17,000 in year one and 17,000 in year two. 
in our two year programs, we do have scholarship opportunities for our students. So based on your marks from year one, as well as a few other criteria, you could apply to receive one of five $2,000 scholarships to apply to your costs in your second year of study. So again, admissions requirements are a successful, successfully completed secondary diploma with an average of 60% and no marks less than 50. Uh, in this program, uh, Saskatchewan grade 12 level math is necessary. Um, the English language requirements are 6.5 and no bands less than five and a Duolingo score of 110. So our continuing care assistant program is uh, an entry level health position it's very popular with students who have either already been working in health or they are interested in joining the health field in Canada. It is an eight month program uh, that allows students to uh, have three clinical placements within that uh, that time frame. So basically students will have the opportunity to work in three different care settings. And this is valuable because um, the, the demand for continuing care assistance is so high right now that normally one of those uh, practicum placements results in a job offer. So it's very valuable for students to, um, to have that experience. The cost of this program for September 2022 is 17,000. So again, same admissions requirements. Uh, in this program, though, in order to apply, you need to uh, have your immunizations up to date um, as, as much as you can from, from uh, the Philippines. So if there are certain immunizations that you cannot get in the Philippines, then you can get those when you get to Canada. Uh, however, it's a good idea to start working on that as soon as you arrive uh, because you need those immunizations in place before you go on your first practicum placement, which is not too long after the start of the year. The Youth Care Worker Diploma is our second two-year program, and uh, it is a training program to work with at-risk youth. So uh, people with this training can work in, in schools or youth shelters, uh, group homes, or addiction facilities. The average salary is about 52,000 per year. And the cost of this program is uh, 16,800 in year two. Again, just a reminder that all of our prices in, include all of your costs associated with your program, uh, including health insurance and books. Uh, this pro program also has two practicum placements. So you will need to apply for a co-op work permit and again, you have the opportunity to experience a couple of different, um, you know, kind of areas where youth care workers are employed. Uh, one thing that we have been told is that the demand for youth care workers uh, will be on the rise as we work our way out of the pandemic. Um, this uh, training is very valuable in terms of supporting youth and uh, with the growing levels of mental health um, issues that uh, Canada is seeing, uh, this will be a very in-demand um, career. So again, same admissions requirements and um, the one difference in, in this program is that we ask that students have a criminal record check from their home country and they uh, submit that with their application or bring it with them when they arrive. And um, they will, they may also be asked to get a criminal record check from within Canada for their second um, practicum placement, uh, which is a year into the program. Uh, IELTS scores are uh, overall 6.5 and again, no bands less than five. So our application deadlines for uh, the September intake are May 31st uh, and the, the January intake is October 31st. Uh, one thing to note though is that uh, study permit processing time has been 
greatly extended by our uh, current pandemic situations. So it is a, a very good idea to apply sooner rather than later. The application process is very easy to go through. Uh, everything can be done online. Uh, there is an application form to complete and um, you can also upload all of your supporting documents, which is any secondary or post-secondary transcripts that you might have. Um, also your uh, copy of your passport and then any of your language proficiency results can also be uploaded at that time. Uh, we use the uh, Flywire platform to uh, accept payments from overseas. So uh, students can pay the $140 uh, non-refundable application fee via Flywire. So once we have everything, oh, I see, I forgot to change that application fee that went up this for September, 2022. Uh, so once we receive all of your documents and your uh, application fee, then we will assess your um, application for eligibility. Uh, we will normally provide a decision to students within three to five days of receiving their complete application. So if a student is eligible, we will send an offer letter. And uh, that offer letter basically asks for the tuition deposit, which is a 50% tuition deposit if students are applying through the regular stream of immigration. If they're applying through the student direct stream, then we ask for 100% of the first year tuition. Again, all tuition deposits can be paid through Flywire. Um, once the tuition deposit is received, then we will send you your acceptance documents that you need to apply for your study permit. And again, we try very hard to maintain a three to five business day turnaround for all documentation. So I'm, I'm excited to tell you a little bit about what the province has to offer for you uh, in terms of uh, an international student's experience here. So Saskatchewan right now uh, has one of Canada's strongest economies. There is, um, even throughout the pandemic, we have managed to maintain some semblance of an economy. And uh, so there is lots of job opportunities, both during uh, your study and after uh, you're done studying. So for example, I like to use the example of 2018. We had uh, 60 students arrive for our September intake and within 10 days, all of those students had jobs. So it gives you a little indication of the, um, the scope of job availability within the province. One of Saskatchewan's other main sales points is our Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. Uh, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program is one of Canada's fastest pathways to permanent residence in the country. Uh, basically, students need three things in order to be able to apply for permanent residence. They need to successfully complete a program. They need 780 hours of work experience. And the work that you do while you study can accumulate to those 780 hours. And finally, they need a job offer in their field. So uh, a good example of, of this is the Continuing Care Assistant Program. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are virtually limitless job opportunities in that field at this point. So basically that program takes eight months to complete. So as long as you successfully complete, then uh, you will have the, the certificate in hand. Within that eight months, you probably be able to accumulate about, I would say, somewhere between 650 and 700, hour, 700 hours of work experience. Uh, so you would have the majority of that 780 completed. Finally, um, you would have your choice of job opportunities at the end of your uh, program. And so you could complete your 780 hours working as a continuing care assistant. And within a year, you would be able to apply for permanent residence in Canada. So um, the regional college system of which Great Plains College is a part, uh, in my opinion, is perfect for international students. International students, um, go into their education experience with a certain set of needs. 
Um, basically, they do require uh, some additional support uh, because they're learning in a, a, a different culture and a different education system, um, and sometimes in a language that's not as familiar to them. So the regional college uh, system provides those small class sizes that I spoke about earlier. And those um, kind of more intimate classroom experiences really do promote a greater uh, level of success for international students. Again, uh, spoke earlier about our student supports. Uh, one of the things to note is that when you're in a small class, uh, you know, like the ones that Great Plains College has, um, an instructor will pick up on some of the areas where you're struggling as, a, as an individual. And so um, not only will they offer their support, but they will be able to point you in the direction of finding greater support if necessary. So even if students aren't comfortable asking for help, normally it's offered to them anyway, uh, based on um, you know, observations from the instructor. One of the other things that I think is really important is um, the fact that our smaller cities really provide a strong sense of community for our international student population. Almost every student that I've dealt with makes comment about how warm and welcoming uh, Saskatchewan is. So that strong sense of community is really important because as humans, we all want to belong somewhere. We all want a group that, that um, you know, a group of friends or a group that becomes like family. So that's something that is readily available in our small cities within Saskatchewan. Uh, further to that, uh, the Filipino population in Saskatchewan, uh, as I said earlier, is, is alive and well. They are, uh, um, present in every one of our cities, and they, they certainly are, um, you know, help to create a more rich culture within each of our Saskatchewan uh, communities. And finally, the uh, probably one of the more important pieces is, is the fact that our tuition and our cost of living uh, is much more economical than in many locations across the country. Uh, this is important for international students. We know that international students pay premium prices for tuition, so that opportunity to save money in the cost of living is really quite valuable to them. So I want to thank you very much for joining us today, and I, I welcome any questions that you will have. Um, I certainly hope I can provide you with some answers. and. Uh, Certainly, if things come up uh, after our presentation is done, you can feel free to email me anytime, uh, but also certainly reach out to the staff at uh, Gateway to Canada. They are fantastic in terms of supporting our students through the application and study permit application process. Thank you. Thank you for that, Christy, for your uh, presentation. So right now to all of our viewers and attendees, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to enter it in our Q&A box below in your, uh, for our Zoom attendees and to our Facebook Live viewers. You can enter your questions in the comment section. Okay, um, for our first question, is there any scholarships for senior high and college, and I believe the next question for this one is, does Great Plains College accept grade 12 students, um, the graduates here? Christy? Sure. Yeah. So uh, students who graduate from the secondary system in the Philippines uh, are eligible to apply for our post-secondary programs. So, so definitely uh, we will uh, be happy to have uh, those applicants for sure. Uh, in terms of scholarships, then the one scholarship opportunity that we have exists within our uh, two-year programs only. So within our two-year programs, uh, students can use their marks from their first year uh, to apply for scholarships in their second year. And uh, for the 2022 year, we have five $2,000 scholarships that we will be awarding to uh, successful applicants from the international population. Okay, thanks for that, Christy. So um, regarding the scholarship, so it will be based on their performance and the, on their first year of study, right? Basically, it's um, 
It's uh, based on three things. So it's mm -hmm. based on their marks within their first year of study. It's also based on their attendance within the program. Uh, and thirdly, it's based on, um, you know, opportunities that they've taken to become involved in the community. So if they've done any volunteer work or any kind of like uh, work within the community, like unpaid work within the community, then uh, that also kind of helps their their application. So the point is uh, basically to connect students to the community through uh, through volunteerism, uh, because certainly that does help students to get uh, employment when they're done their programs. Right, right. And also if they um, it will be a big help for them also in their second year if they will be getting the scholarship. Definitely, for sure. And we would we would be happy to give it to uh, to deserving applicants. OK, perfect. And um, also uh, for our next question, since the uh, tuition fee includes the insurance and the books of the student, um, is it possible to add the insurance of or to apply insurance of the dependents under the uh, for the student? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I think at this point that our insurance only covers um, students, so registered students within the program. Uh, I I'm fairly certain that uh, the students that we've had that have come with dependents have had to get external insurance for, for their um, spouse or family. Okay, that's great. But does Great Green College also assist for the external um, insurance of the dependents of the student? We certainly can. However, it actually makes more sense for the students to get their insurance from their home country before they arrive. So um, certainly that's something they probably should have in place before they arrive. But but if they need um, you know some assistance, we can certainly provide them with some um, ideas on where they could look for that. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that, Christy. Okay, um, for our next question, since um, mostly our students do have the dependents or kids, um, is or the or the first question is, um, is Great Plains College near with a child care or nursery schools for kids? Yeah, so uh, one of the things about the about our Saskatchewan cities is that it doesn't take long to get anywhere. So <laughs> certainly uh, it's easy to get around and, and uh, relatively quick to travel from place to place. So uh, there are numerous uh, child care facilities in each of the cities where we have campus locations. And uh, so once students arrive, then we can certainly support them to find a place that they're comfortable with and that their kids are happy in. And uh, you know, certainly we can, we can assist with that. Okay, perfect. Thanks for that, Christy. Okay, um, we have a few or many questions in our Facebook inbox. Uh, there's a question about the accommodation. Does uh, Great Plains College have an in-campus residence? Okay, so uh, we have we don't have um, on-campus residents uh, at each at any of our locations. But as soon as a student's study permit is approved, then we start the process of assisting students to find appropriate accommodation for them. So, so basically, we can send you a list of uh, available accommodation within a city, um, and you can take it from there, or we can help you with, uh, you know making some connections with the property managers that have accommodations available. Uh, we've even gone to do, um, you know, FaceTime walkthroughs of apartments so that students can see what they're getting before they rent. So, so certainly we will do whatever it takes to, um, you know, ensure that students have accommodation that they're comfortable with prior to their arrival, uh, just because we, you know, we want them to be, um, to be able to settle as soon as they, as soon as they arrive. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, uh, for our next question is probably for the um, requirements already for the September 2022. Does Great Plains College right. also uh, are now accepting applications? Yeah, so our applications are open for September and uh, we have um, 
numerous seats still available. It's pretty early in the year. So uh, certainly we, uh, we have lots of seats available. However, as I said, uh, you know, it's good to apply early because the, the study permit processing time has been, um, well, it's been fun, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, also, uh, uh, just a quick um, question. Um, how is it the offer the program delivery of Great Plains College for January 2022? Good question. Uh, so to be honest with you, Great Plains College has maintained face-to-face -face delivery for this whole time. Um, in, in certain periods of time uh, throughout um, probably mid 2020, 2021, uh, we did move to a blended model, which meant that uh, groups were, um, or classes were grouped and uh, they came on a rotation. So they had some face-to-face -face and some virtual, but uh, all of our delivery has been face-to-face -face predominantly for this entire time. And um, it will continue to be that way. So we have not offered any online options for students. Um, basically, we, we really, feel like um, learning face-to-face -face is in students' best interest, not to mention the fact that when you're an international student, part of the, part of the experience is coming to Canada and being here and you know, enjoying all the other aspects of life in Canada. And so certainly that was something that we really, really tried hard to continue to uh, provide for students. Okay, okay. thanks for that, Chrissy. Um, of course. Um... We don't have any um, questions in our um, inbox as well as in the Q&A box. Um, but just a few final remarks, Christy, um, as we don't want to take much of your time. I know it's already nighttime there in Saskatchewan. No problem, no problem. Uh, do you have any final remarks to our um, attendees or to our future students? Um, I guess all I will say is that, uh, you know, we would welcome applications to our program. Uh, I know that you would be uh, thrilled with the level of education. I know that you would be happy with the, the opportunities to work. And um, I think that the main point is that Sask Saskatchewan and Great Plains College isn't only a place to get an education. It's really a place to build a life here in Canada. So we would... Uh, to welcome all of you to join us here in Saskatchewan. Okay, thank you for that, Chrissy. And also thank you for accepting our invitation for this webinar. And to our all viewers, um, if you have any questions after our webinar, please feel free to contact us or visit our website. That's www.gatewaytocanada.com and connect to our case managers for further assistance. And for that, um, this is the end of our webinar and thank you, Christy, for um, joining us this morning to us and evening to you. Have a good night, Christy. Thank you so much, Tim. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.